All right, here we are back for another week of Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, getting our picks in, getting ready. We're doing pretty good. We're actually climbing up a little bit, uh, having a good season here. And uh, hopefully if you're following the advice here on the channel, you're having a pretty good season as well. Santee Cooper was a pretty sweet event. A couple of guys cracked the century belt, got over 100 pounds. Drew Cook and Caleb Kufal cracked 100 pounds. And if Caleb Kufal gets one more keeper on day two, he probably wins that tournament. I am not sure we're going to see 100 pounds this week at Chickamauga. Chickamauga is historic in nature, but it's on a little bit of a lull, so I don't think we're going to see 100 pounds. I think we're going to be even maybe tough to even crack an 80. So I'm thinking give or take somewhere around 80 pounds to win this Elite Series event on Chickamauga in early April. And just to remember, PSA, there is no N in Chickamauga. It's not Chickamauga. Okay. Thanks. Checking on our leaders and winners from the Beat Hellabas group right now. Dominator and Fredrickson is leading the group after four events. Let's see if he can hold on in the regular fantasy fishing. And D. Pierce is leading the Drain the Lake Challenge so far. Mr. Young, congratulations for the fantasy fishing. He's already got his Omni gift card. It's already been delivered to him, so kudos to him. And Mr. John Atkins, Big Show himself, has already got his Omni gift card for the Drain the Lake Challenge. Uh, for Sandy Cooper. Don't worry if you didn't win. There's still a chance every single week if you join the group Beat Hellabass, Password Advisor, you can join our private group because you're a viewer of the channel. And if you don't think you're going to cash in on the prizes, don't worry. There's still some great codes in the description that'll save you 15% off on just about everything you order from Omnia Fishing down in the description below. And then you can enjoy their super fast shipping, awesome selection, and great customer service. Chickamauga, water levels have been fluctuating a little bit, kind of coming up, coming down, so the fish really haven't made that push to go shallow just yet. Water temps are in the upper 50s to just about 60, but the weather forecast is kind of mild. It's a little bit warm, not real warm, lows in the 30s and 40s, highs in the 60s, so it can warm up a little bit, but it's not going to be a mad warm-up like we had at Santee Cooper. I think there will be some spawning fish, but I think it's going to be a primarily pre-spawn event. If the water continues to rise a little bit and settles without dropping, we could see some fish get shallow and be caught on shallow patterns. I think we'll see everything from finesse, moving baits, crankbaits, chatterbaits, swim jigs, to soft plastics, finesse, and maybe even big baits like glide baits, swim baits, and wake baits might play in this event a little bit as well. I think it's going to be pretty wide open. I think day-to-day -day things will change quite a bit. Areas, places like that. So I think the, area, the anglers that can adapt with the fish day-to-day -day are going to be the ones to put on your roster in this pre-spawn battle. Well, let's jump right into the buckets and get to picking. Starting at the bottom and working our way up, we're all going to start with Bucket E. The guys are having a little bit of a tough start to their season after two tournaments in Florida and Santee Cooper, but there are some gems in Bucket E for Chickamauga. Most notably, the fan favorite of the bucket, Kyle Welcher, who did so good at the Classic and almost won it, finishing runner-up to Jason Christie. He's had a couple up-and-down tournaments in the other three events, so he's down here in Bucket E. But he is no stranger to Lake Chickamauga. He's fished a lot of events here, weekend series, opens, costas, BFLs, tournaments like that, and had a lot of success. It's not necessarily his home water, but it's a place he spent a lot of time. He's also a very fly by the seat of his pants, fish the moment, springtime shallow fisherman, which could play really well this week. But over 40% of you are already picking Kyle Welcher, and if you want to join the wagon, jump on there. He's probably a smart pick. I also think Brock Mosley could be pretty good here. He loves a chatterbait, and I think he's willing to, uh, to, to block that in his hand and possibly have a good tournament. But somebody that might be a little sneaky, a little bit on the radar, if you're not super in the know about Bassmaster Elite Series rookie Jacob Fouts, who qualified through the Opens, a former college champion. He is from the Lake Chickamauga, Tennessee area, and he's actually spent the last few years guiding on Lake Chickamauga in area lakes like Watts Bar and Nickajack. He's no slouch in the area. He knows his way around. So if you're looking for somebody that's just a little bit more off the radar, a little lower percentage, you could lock in with Jacob Feltz like I am. Moving on to Bucket D, you got the defending classic champ, Jason Christie here, who had a really tough tournament on Santee Cooper. Uh, I think this is a tournament that could also set up for Stephen Kennedy. I used him in the Santee Cooper event. It actually paid off pretty decent. I'm not going to tempt fate by picking him in back-to-back -back tournaments, but I wouldn't be surprised if he has a good event here on Lake Chickamauga. Another angler that pops out to me is Matthew Robertson. He's had a rough start to his 2022 season, and on social media, he's been very vocal about how upset he is and how angry he is about this, and he's looking forward to get things back on track. He's been out on Kentucky Lake honing his skills this week, and uh, looking to put it to him. 
Now, we'll see if he can carry some of that anger, frustration, and turn it into positive energy at Chickamauga. It is a TVA lake. He likes to swim bait, so if that big bite bait goes down, he could be a good pick. But a sneakier pick at less than 1% ownership, Minnesota's Josh Douglas. Well, what you may not know is Josh Douglas actually lived in Chattanooga, Tennessee for a few years and guided on Chickamauga as well. He spent a lot of time visiting friends down there, fishing with buddies, and guiding on Chickamauga when he lived in the area for a handful of years. So he's a sneaky good pick. He should be a solid value in Bucket D, and he should be a safe pick to get you some really good fantasy points from Bucket D, if not be a contender on the final day and get a top 10. Bucket C, fighter, like I told you earlier, he's on the way up. He started at some really tough tournaments, but now he's found himself uh, near the top of Bucket C and continues to rise. Not a bad idea to hitch your wagons to Seth Fighter, as he is an excellent mid-depth fisherman, and in the pre-spawn is a great time of year to be fishing the mid-depth. So think about fighter in Bucket C. Lee Livesey, your defending champ, last time here in the fall on a frog. The frog's probably not going to play, but he does understand Chickamauga. He's got some friends there. He should know they're around, and he's not afraid to throw a big bait. So if that big bait pre-spawn bite is good, Lee Livesey could be good. But for me, the guy that really looks good to me in this event is Brian Schmidt. I always say when there's current and there's grass and there's pre-spawn, Brian Schmidt's always a threat to win, and I'm going to go with that advice, and he's a pretty good value in bucket C. Moving on to Bucky B, you got big bait specialists like Chris Zeldane. He could definitely do some damage on the big bait, but he'd be consistent enough for three or four days to pay off and not burn himself and your fantasy team. It was hard for me not to take Luke Palmer. He's been so good to me the last couple of events. The classic in Cooper, he is overperformed. He's moved himself up to B bucket, and I almost wanted to take him here. But in the end, I'm going to give Jacob Prosnick, j Powell one more chance to shine through. Even though I've been picking him a lot and he's just been okay, not really been great, I'm hoping he's great here on Chickamauga, uh, and he proves his pre-spawn shallow uh, strengths and uh, shows up big, and then maybe we can keep that momentum going into Lake Fork. Uh, come on, Jay Powell. Don't prove me wrong this time. Finally, Bucket A. You've got two rock star, throwbred Chickamauga horses to pick from in Buddy Gross and John Cox. On top of that, you've got some other guys like Mullins. I mean, this, it's, it's Polinick, so many guys to pick from. Any of these could do really well in here, but Gross and Cox really jump off the page. Now, Gross, I think it actually says fish like Chickamauga on the side of his wrap. So he's no stranger, fish a ton of tournaments. He's guided here. He knows his way around Chickamauga. He's definitely going to be looking for those pre-spawn schooled up fish. So the question is, will there be enough of them still wadded up the way he really likes to fish offshore and fish for big numbers? Or are they going to be constantly moving away from him, going shallow, staging, and moving around? If they're more on the move, I feel like that's going to more fit John Cox than it is Buddy Gross. But I guess we'll find out when the tournament starts this week. John Cox has been super solid all season. He's leading the Bass National Elite Series Angler of the Year. It's hard for me not to pick him, and I'm going to go super chalky, chalk, chalk, and go John Cox in bucket A this week. My tiebreaker, 78 pounds, 3 ounces. I don't think they're going to quite hit 80 pounds. Chickamauga has been a little tougher than it has been. Uh... Stay away from the 100-pound talk. I think uh, high 70s, low 80s is about where this is going to land. And I think you're going to see them guys catch some big bags, you know, 23, 26, 27 pounds, but they'll probably follow it up with like 11, 12, 13, 14 pounds the next day. If a guy can be consistent and get 17, 18 to 20 pounds, I think that's going to be a rock-solid strategy in this event. Now let's finish up with Drain the Lake. All right, my Drain the Lake roster is even rocking a little harder than my regular fancy fishing. We are up in the top 800 and change, and in the 95%, well into the dark green if you're watching at home, Ronnie Moore. I'm watching you. All right, let's go through here and pick our eight angler roster. And now you say, if you look down below, uh, these are all the anglers we've already burned, and the list gets smaller and smaller for every little event. So start planning out, if you haven't already, who you're going to save and when you're going to use them. We are going to take John Cox. We've already talked about why. I'm not taking Josh Douglas. I'm saving him for later. Fouts, he's going on the roster this week, as well as Buddy Gross for all the reasons that we've talked about. We are going to use up Mr. Brandon Card. He's a pretty good shell or springtime pre-spawn offshore fisherman. He doesn't really like to look at him, so he's definitely going to be looking for those staging fish. We are going to put Welcher on the team this week for obvious reasons we've talked about before. Skylar Hamilton, because he's kind of from the area, but not too far away, but I just really don't know where else to use him, and I figure we're just going to lock the Tennessee guy in in Tennessee. And he's likes to fish shallow, and Chickamauga has some good shallow water to fish. Also, we're also going to put David Mellon's AOI contender in the mix this week as well. Last but not least, 
we are going to put the Aussie because he's a hometown, lives right near Chattanooga, spends all his off time on Chickamauga as well. So there is our eight angler roster locked in. We'll see. We've got a mix of shallow, offshore, pre-spawn, big bait guys, locals, people from not the area. We're stacking it up, and hopefully one of these guys will be the winner on Chickamauga because picking the winner in Drain the Lake and the bonus points there is the key to success. I think we've picked the winner in all but one event this year in Drain the Lake, and it's led us just in a really good position for Drain the Lake. If you want some extra good juicy juice, we just did a live stream where we broke down Lake Chickamauga with a local Caleb Bell from Bass Quest. Check out the replay of that stream right here. 